Hello everyone, thanks for tuning in. Today we are going to talk about course errors or this is cross origins reference errors. And the whole idea of cross reference origins errors, uh, errors is that uh, when you have an APICO, uh, it's uh, this one over here. Uh, and when you have an APCO, APCO, and uh, this APCO, it's actually, um, it's actually outside of the scope of the domain that you're trying to open uh, or trying to send a request to. So in my example, I'm using Flutterflow. So it will be flutterflow.io. And then this is the domain that I'm trying to uh, access, which is africau.edu education. Uh, and this is actually the file. It's a PDF file. Uh, I am trying to uh, access. And then uh, if you actually uh, want to do this, and you get an error. You get a cross reference, which is that the domains are actually not the same. And you get the, this error, it's a very common error, and you get this error because, uh, as I said, the domains are not the same. And you mostly get this error if you're using uh, web deployment. So if you, if you have a web deployment and you have APICOs which are different than your domain, you get this error. Uh, it's a very common error. And today I will going to show you how you can fix it. Uh, it's a very simple fix actually, uh, but I just wanted to share the, with you uh, the fix. But let me first show you how this actually works. Uh, so the whole idea is that I have a simple text field over here and I can place a PDF file. So like I said in the last video, we talked about it and there was a uh, there was this error cross and then we fix it with a <clears throat> extension in, uh, in uh, Chrome. Uh, but today we're going to not use extensions because the extension is uh, you can fix it on your computer, but if uh, you want to deploy this website to some uh, and send it to some users, there is, uh, you cannot actually, it's not sustainable to ask your users to install uh, extensions. Uh, so the whole idea, like I said, is you place a PDF file or you can change the code and place any file you want to. But in our, in our case, we we're talking about a PDF file. So the whole idea is you place a PDF file and you click upload. So when you click upload, right now there is, uh, I didn't actually show a message here, uh, but you can, if you want to. And then the whole idea is that I, in my Firebase storage, if I go to users and then the ID of the users and then the folder, it's called PDF. And if I refresh this, let me just refresh it real quickly for you. Right now, as probably you can see, or you cannot see it's 10.23 AM. And if I click this, this is the PDF that, that it was just created. It's 10, uh, 33. So it's the same time it was just created. It's three megabytes. And then I can, the name of the PDF, it's demo. So I can just click on it. And this is, you can see the URA. It's the, um, it's my URA actually of the project. And then this is the original one. So you can see it's actually the same PDF. There's two pages PDF and there's the second page PDF. Uh, it's totally the same PDF. Uh, and then if I click on upload course, which is using another strategy, the old strategy from the old video to upload, to try to upload this file, I will get this error. So let me just show you real quickly. So if I click this button, We'll wait a little bit <clears throat> and now you probably can see that I have this uh, uh, from origins. So we have the, like I said, Africa from origin uh, and the origin actually it says here it's service, 
uh, front end storage and probably this is what uh, Fiverrflow is using and it says has been blocked by course policy no access control allow origin header is pre uh, prevented on the uh, request sources so like I said this is a very common error and this will appear in all your web deployments or not only web deployments but if you want to test your app uh, in a test mode or run mode uh, and uh, just keep in mind that um, this will actually, I think this will actually run fine. As I said in the last video, search from the forum. Uh, he's a very prominent user and ex expert of Freelowflow, and he confirmed me that it is this will work fine. <clears throat> sorry, when you're using a mobile device. So, like I said, this will not work if you are using. Um, <clears throat> if you're using web deployment on test flow te or test or, uh, or run mode. So let me show you how uh, this actually works. Uh, so if I go over here, uh, where is uh, my code? Uh, there's not code actually in this project. Um, so this is my page, it's a very simple page. I have a text field, which is a super normal text field. I don't have anything in this text field. And then I have two buttons. The first button, it's, let's, let's go with the first button, which is the original button. So if I go to the first button, uh, I have some code, which is to upload file to local and web, which we talked about in the last video. If you haven't watched the last video, so yeah, if you haven't watched my last video, this is the last video I'm talking about. Save custom PDFs and files with Flutterflow to Firebase storage, easy guide. Uh, and let's go over here. Now, so this is code, like I said, I will not uh, explain the code because I already did it in this video. If you haven't watched it, you can watch it. And then I'm actually storing the file path I'm storing uh, and I'm returning it as a path uh, or maybe this would be better as, as a path, not paths. And this will actually can go to file uh, path and the action output will be path and confirm. Okay, uh, so this is like I said, this will work in mobile, but it's not working uh, in um, it's not working on web. So let me just fix that real quickly. Uh, this should be file path and not name. Uh, and then this was, like I said, the old button. And the new button, let me just zoom a little bit. And the new button uh, is the, the whole logic of the new button is that we have an Apico. And the Apico is actually. Uh, a simple Apico, which is the PDF, uh, and then we have the uh, custom action, which is to upload a RAW file to Firebase storage. So let me show you first the Apico. So if I go over here, uh, I have two Apicos right now. So the first one uh, is this one, the second one is this one. And the only uh, difference between those two Apicos are this Apico is actually a private, make this Apico private. So if you click on advanced settings, make private the Apico, it will actually make this Apico private. And what was, what is this actually doing is that it's uh, transforming this Apico into a cloud function. So you can see uh, over here, private app is must be deployed as cloud functions in your Firebase project. And you it will appear here out of date. If you if you uh, if you click this, it will appear here out of date. Your cloud functions are out of date and it will say deploy your cloud function. You have to click a button over here and it will then it will get this you you should get this green uh, and it says a uh, green check and it says uh, deployed. And then the other one that we're using is actually not a private one and that's why we are getting this error <clears throat> in order to avoid the error and we are using when we're using apicos 
like I said, we need to make this API call. We need to go to advanced settings, make private, make the API call private, deploy uh, the private API calls. And if, you, and if you go to your Firebase and go to functions, uh, you can actually see uh, your API calls. So right now I have, uh, sorry, not your API calls, your cloud functions. Right now I have two cloud functions. And this is the one uh, that we're talking about, is the one that it's the actual API call that is being converted to a cloud function. And thanks to this, this thanks to this fix, it will actually no longer uh, have the cross-reference origins uh, error. Uh, and actually I did another one, uh, which is uh, lock user actions uh, that we run every 24 hours. Uh, and we are actually going to talk about more in the future videos about how you can deploy your own API calls. Yes, this this time came, uh, finally came to talk about deploying cloud functions. I avoided actually uh, talking about cloud functions and the sole reason for that is that you need to code and it's heavily coded. So let me know in the comments uh, w uh what type of uh, cloud functions you want me to show you first and if you have some uh recommendations let me know because i was i'm still wondering which are the best cloud functions i can show you okay so let's go back to the actual code i'm saying i keep on saying code it's not code actually we just need this api code and then if i go back the private one so if i go back to this uh, button which is the working one in web and go to open and this is my back uh, this is my api code so i only need this api code and i'm getting the the, the file as bytes so the api code will return uh, like i said uh, let me just show you one more thing. So just to be clear, I, uh, this is a GET request. I only have the arrow to the page. So uh, the arrow to the file. I don't have any var uh, var uh, variables and I don't have any uh, query parameters. This is the only thing that I have. And then if I go to re uh, restore, probably this is important to show you because if I test this API call, I will get a no. And when I get a no, you thinking that, okay, this is not working. Something is wrong. I should not get a no. Uh, but unfortunately, this is how uh, Flutterflow is working right now. So you will get a no uh, and don't worry about it. It will still work. I tested, so it will still work and you just saw that uh, it is working. But the, in reality, it will not return no. It will actually return the file as PS bytes. And then we have another custom uh, custom code, and yes, this time we have a custom code. And then we, if we go, if I go back to the uh, custom code, like I said, every time I have the GitHub setup. So if you need to check the code, uh, just go to the GitHub. It will be available. The link will be available in the description. Uh, so the whole idea is that we are getting the file as bytes from the API code. And then we are getting these file as bytes and then we're uploading it uh, to the users, the ID of the user and then PDFs. And then the file name, in my case, it's demo, but you, you can just call it wherever you want to. And then we are uploading the file. And when we upload the file, uh, we actually output the, uh, we actually save uh, the download URL or URA uh, to the file path. So if I uh, actually try to instant reload this page, uh, uh, I'll probably have the time to show you. Uh, but yeah, this is the whole idea. Uh, and like I said, this will return you the file as uh, bytes. And there was actually a questions, a uh, lot of questions on the live stream. Uh, how do you uh, store files in uh, Firebase and I think, uh, sorry, in Flutterflow and I think this is how you can do it. You can actually have a simple API call and then when you have this API call, uh, you can store it as, as strings and then you can open it. So this video is coming uh, as well. 
how to store files and then open them in uh, Fluvaflow uh, and uh, the example will be PDFs because I think this is the most required one uh, and then let me see if that loaded okay so now it loaded and uh, let me go back over here to the page and let me just copy the file again so if i place this file here upload it i should see the path yes so you can see the path over here uh, that was successfully uploaded uh, and then if i refresh this page i should get the time she's entered 6 or 37 i'm not sure um, when it was exactly uploaded so let me just see Okay, so if I click over here, you can see it's 1037 uh, and now it's 1037. So this is the file. Let me open it again and it's totally working. And like I said, this is only this is not only for uploading files, of course. Uh, like I said, this can be you should actually use this for every single Apico that you have. Uh, AP code that you have uh, and uh, and yeah uh, in order to work for web you should uh, use it with advanced and then private API uh, there is no disadvantage for that uh, and uh, you can definitely do it this way if you don't need your uh, app to work uh, for web then just don't do it uh, but if you want to work for web this is how you can do it and before we go actually i just wanted to i just wanted to tell you and let you know that uh, you can actually join the live stream uh, and uh, you can actually book a live stream if you want to talk with me and there are actually coming uh, new things for my calendar uh, i'm actually partnering uh, with a friend of mine very close friend of mine uh, who is very good with ui and ux and i know that there are a lot of people asking me for this so uh, there the calendar will be changed in the future and i, I will uh, have this uh, function as well so I, I will provide help for ui and ux uh, as well in the future so yeah good things are coming stay tuned thank you very much for watching like 99 percent of the people watching videos in youtube not only my channel but youtube uh, don't stay until the last minute so thumbs up for you that you stayed until the last minute Thank you and have a nice day. Bye-bye. Take care.